Welcome in, everyone. This is Out of Order. My name is Ben Mayer. My name is Anthony Buono. And today we are going to talk about a new rule from the Biden administration's EPA that puts emissions limits on power plants. This is a huge deal. The huge. Biden administration has been going on a rampage, putting out rules regulating first vehicle emissions to force more EVs to be made. Um, basically trying to constrain, they're trying, they're using the stick in the economy to make to reduce emissions, they're really shooting to hit their reduction goals. And now we get a big one for power plants. Um, so what this does is it requires coal plants and new gas burning power plants to reduce 90% of their emissions by 2039. Wow. That's huge. Yes. Okay. So um, initially the rule was going to apply to existing gas burning plants as well, but it received pushback from moderate Democrats and the gas industry. This one I can almost understand, right? Like it's, we're not that far in our green transition mm -hmm. to renewable power generation. And we do not want to deindustrialize as a country. In fact, we are re-industrializing right now. You need a lot of power for that. So if we want to hit that goal, we can't push too hard with the stick to make it, to, to force natural gas power plants to shutter basically mm -hmm. um so this is th i also want to add one more thing to that it was 90 percent of the greenhouse gas pollution by 2039 yes previously it was 2040 yes and then it they changed it to 2039 and then expanded it to future coal plant or future gas plants right because I, i'm they no they had it at future gas plants it was it started at future gas plants and it started at current gas plants they took off current gas plants i'm also thinking so this is I think it's actually that they have to reduce it by 2032. And if they don't do it by 2032, then they're going to be disconnected from the grid by 2039. Ah. Uh, so the deadline is 32. And if they don't hit 32, they're out by 39. Gotcha. I think that's how it works. Um, this is... So from for coal plants, this basically means that they're gone. Yeah. Coal plants can only operate under these conditions if... They spend enormous amounts of money on carbon capture. Basically, that's the only way they, they can reduce their emissions. Exactly. Yeah. Um, the, the current ways that they do this, right? The main way of doing carbon capture is like trapping the emissions from the smokestacks before they reach the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, no coal plant currently does this yet. None of them, none do it effectively and economically for it to make sense. Economically is the big thing right now. It will cost billions upon billions of dollars no, to try to do there's this. some scientists that suggest running coal plants on ammonia could actually be possible yes but this has also never been implemented successfully so it's all theoretical yeah and so these coal companies these energy companies they're not going to take the gamble on this unproven science they're mm -hmm. gonna push towards the green initiative and do what they can i think or just shut down yeah well that's the thing if you think about a pure coal company like it it has it's either shut down or or invest a shit ton into carbon capture. Yeah. Right. Either way, I'm happy. Yeah. Either right? way, I'm probably happier with investing a shit ton into carbon capture because mm -hmm. then you're going to scale up the technology for everyone to use, not just coal companies. Yeah. Uh, gas industry is going to be kind of the same thing, except gas emits less, so it's not going to be as economically burdensome. Right. Right. It won't be as difficult. Yes. Um. These restrictions also not just go for uh, like carbon emissions. It's also about mercury too. Yeah. There is mercury. It's regulating the emissions of mercury, a neurotoxin that has developmental problems for children. Um, and they also restrict the seepage of toxic ash from coal plants into water supplies and limit the discharge of wastewater from coal plants. One of the things where it's like, wait a second, we weren't doing that already. Um, didn't really, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like we could not have mercury, a neurotoxin that hurts children, at, like running around in bad places. Yeah, but you do need to like explicitly put it in writing. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't make sense. I also, they're also not as widespread of effect. Like, this is not global warming that yeah. it's contributing to. However. It, it does hurt certain people more acutely. Yeah. And I like that it just tightens the the grip 
on the coal companies a little bit tighter. Yeah. So it makes it that much harder for them to keep operating because yeah. we do need to squeeze coal out of the equation. Absolutely. Yeah. The Biden administration is doing a really good job of trying to get us to the 2030 Paris Climate Accord target. They're doing everything they can. Everything they can. So what is the Paris Climate Accord, Accord target? So the goal for the United States is to be 50% of our carbon emissions from our maximum, which is in 2005. Mm -hmm. Currently, with the projections over the next decade, with the Biden administration's Inflation Reduction Act, we're expected to hit 44% by 2030, not hitting 50. But with these new okay. EPA rules, we could hit 50. Yeah. And that's what he's trying to do. He's and with a second Biden term. With a second Biden term, we could very, very likely hit 50%. Yes. 50% carbon reduction meeting our Paris Climate Accord goal. Which, which would be crazy to me. That would be crazy. I mean, a year ago, two years ago, I was Never laughing would have thought it would happen. at that idea. And yeah. it's now actually totally viable because of the Biden and the Democrats in power. Definitely. Two more things I want to talk about here. Yeah. One, how does this work economically? The does, Is it going to hurt the economy because it hurts coal companies? There is a projection that it will lose, that $19 billion will be lost because of coal plant shutdowns. However, the benefits of getting rid of coal are estimated to be $270 billion in Whoa. that same time frame. Do you know how that coming to that? Do you know? No, I okay. didn't look at that. That's fine. Too many things to learn about this Yeah, week. too much. Um, the only other thing I want to talk about, so economically, we're looking good. The other thing is legally, how does this look? Because... The Obama administration tried to put through a rule in the EPA uh, to to squeeze coal plants that was challenged by West Virginia, and the Supreme Court ruled that the EPA had overstepped once the the case got there. So instead, here what the what the EPA or what the the court said is that the EPA didn't provide a realistic enough alternative or way to reduce those emissions while still staying in. Uh, while still staying operational. This rule is taking a bottom-up approach, regulating individual plants rather than a systemic approach regulating the industry as a whole to try to comply with the court. They've also put together hundreds of pages of explanation, of research, justification behind the rule, which makes it much more likely to be able to survive a court challenge. Yeah. Um, so I'm really hopeful Every time we bring up one of these rules that Biden is putting through, we bring up that it's immediately going to get challenged in the courts. This one will too. I'm hoping it's robust enough to survive. Same here. Thank you for watching this episode of Out of Order. I can't believe you made it to the end. If you like this video, subscribe to us on YouTube. And if you really like us, check us out on Patreon. This week, one of our videos is about Antony Blinken, the Secretary of State, and his tours to China and the Middle East. Our other video is talking about Biden's new regulations in school meals about sugar and sodium content. And then this week, we did a deep dive into why the U.S. and European economies are diverging so much. Thanks, guys. See you on the next episode.